How are you doing? I am Todd Bookspan, the founder of Win by Noon, and this is going to be a kickoff for those of you who have not written business plans for 2021, or maybe you've written it and just need a little bit of sharpening. I, I love teaching this class. Uh, I recognize a couple names who are here of people who've already been through it at least once, so I know uh, that uh, it wasn't that bad last time if people are coming back, or maybe it was bad, but they, they need to come back and have a refresher. Um, but uh, for those who don't know me, I'm Todd Bookspan, the founder of Win by Noon, and this is uh, just really the funnest class because prior to getting into coaching and having Win by Noon, I taught business planning uh, every year, you know, November, December, January it was really the biggest class that I taught. And then I used quarterly business planning with my partners as really one of the ways that I, that I grew my business. You know, this uh, last year marked my 20th year being involved in the industry. And it's just a lot of fun to get to uh, continue to add value and help people really push for 2021, right? 2020 was a crazy, crazy, crazy year in this industry. And now we've got an opportunity to uh, do back-to-back -back great years and really push ourselves. And I think it's gonna take a little bit more planning. I think it's gonna take a little bit more um, intentionality is a word I've been, been using a lot. Um, and really just being focused on what are the activities you need to do to get the results. And so I am going to, uh, I'll still stay on video, but I'm going to run through a PowerPoint here and uh, really help you guys through business planning. Um, the chat feature is live. If you could do me a favor and just let me know um, what industry you're in. I think it's uh, split looking at the way I'm guessing on registration between real estate agents and loan officers. So I'd love to uh, see who is on here and uh, make sure that I'm tailoring my content to all of you. All right. Real estate, real estate. And I obviously I build this as for real estate agents. So I'm expecting to be mostly real estate agents. Um, however, I have some loan officers on here. And when I get to um, the ideal week part, to spoiler, I'm going to actually run through the ideal week for both real estate agents and loan officers. Because in the end, all the other class I ran were, were, for, uh, were for both. So um, perfect. So I got, uh, again, an even split, just kind of anticipated that we would. And uh, chat is open, so you can ask questions as we go along. Uh, I'm doing my best to slow down in 2021 and not be quite as fast when I talk because I think it's because I listen to podcasts and audiobooks on you know, double to triple speed. And therefore, when I talk, I talk so fast. So I'm doing my best to uh, be, a, be a little slower this year. And so when we talk about planning, um, we really need to also start off with, um, you know, kind of what do you need from a tool perspective. And so a lot of you have already downloaded the free business planning tool. You don't need to do it now. Um, I'll walk through the parts of it, but um, you just go to winbynoon.com forward slash business planning tool. Now, the way we've designed this tool is that for the last two years that we've had it out is every quarter we do a new one. So this is your annual one. And then you'll get a quarterly tool that you'll use because we go from annual to quarter and you will use the quarterly tool. Um, yourself, or if you're a loan officer using it uh, with your with your real estate partners, and you'll actually uh, update it each quarter as you go. And we'll talk a little bit about how we transition that. So every quarter, about midway through the quarter, you'll see the one for the next quarter will be available, and that way you can get on there and plan. Um, if you have questions afterwards, just reach out to me, Todd at winbynoon.com. You'll find that email is not my love language. It's not my uh, best, but I typically respond to uh, email within 24 to 48 hours. I'm normally clearing through it at least once a day. And so our plan today is to talk about why planning. You know, you're all here, so I know you get it, but I kind of need to uh, rub a little salt in the wound, kind of poke you in the side just a little bit, because here we are in uh, the uh, first uh, couple of weeks of January and, and you're here to plan. So I want to really remind you why we're going to do it. We'll walk through the business planning tool, and then I'll walk through the ideal week. And uh, the reason that I walk through the ideal week is because if you have a plan and you can't execute your from a productivity perspective, then you're not likely to reach to the you know the high level of goal that you want. And I think that the ideal week, well, I don't think, I know the ideal week is the solution for people who take the time to adopt it. It's not easy to adopt. There's good days and bad days. And you don't need to use my exact ideal week, but you can modify it and make it work for you to be productive. That's how you're going to hit your goals. I always get to ask, me to, do I need to be a win by noon user? And the answer is absolutely not. The tool is designed as a standalone tool. These business planning practices uh, predate uh, win by noon. And uh, ultimately, when you start uh, understanding that the whole idea that activities lead to results and that if you actually can determine what are the activities that I need to do today in order to hit my, 
my year end goal, then you'll realize that win by noon is a tool to help you record those activities. You can record them anywhere. You can record them in a spreadsheet You can record them on a piece of paper. Um, it's just an easy way to do it. Um, I also launched that accountability challenge and, uh, you know, I'm a glutton for punishment, you know, that, that, uh, that uh, definition of insanity, that doing the same thing over again and expecting a different result. Um, this is always the, the frustrating thing. I'll have, you know, hundreds of people who tell me they're going to participate and then I'll have, you know, a couple dozen who do. But if you need a little bit of accountability uh, this month, um, it's a super easy tool. It's in the Win by Noon uh, user mastermind community. You just uh, text accountability to this number here, um, which is 602-737-3848. Um, and that'll let you into the into my text community. And then in that community, we will be uh, asking for accountability. So got off to a little bit of a rough start due to some technology glitches this year. And it's not too late to jump in. It's, it's free and it's just one more way to help yourself grow in 2021. Why plan? I think you guys know this, right? Um, you know, my goal is to push the right buttons to get you guys to do it. Um, I already mentioned the definition of insanity, and I feel like that's a lot of times what people do. You know, there's that old joke, okay, I've been in the business for 20 years, or am I repeating my first year for the 20th time? And I know you, you're here for a reason, and I really, really, really want you to actually crush 2021. And I feel like if I can get you to look at life a little differently, right, if I can get it so when you wake up in the morning, the first thing that you do is check into the news and check your email, and look at your text messages and social media, if I can get you to be focused on your things, I think I can get you to have a more productive 2021. 94% of people arrive at their office with no plan. Now, of course, you can substitute in there, wake up and roll out to the dining room table in COVID where you're working from home. But this is a great statistic. And um, it came from a loan officer specific research group. But every time I've taught this in front of real estate agents, there's always been the broker in the room who laughs out loud and says, that's all of you. And so I know that for you real estate agents that this applies as well. But the bottom line is this, right? 94% of you wake up um, and start working with no plan for the day. Um, and as a result, 91% of you have inconsistent month over month business, right? We understand what that looks like. It's that roller coaster, right? One month is really good. And we kill ourselves to get those loans, those, uh, those homes closed. And then we're not doing lead generation. So the next month we don't have any business. And then we kill ourselves on lead generation. And then we get some leads going. And then we kill ourselves to get them closed. And so the whole goal is to level that off and have you have consistent business. Darren Hardy says it this way. He says, people walk into the office without a plan. And so people are waiting around for fires. Um, and I think that that is uh, true oftentimes for me, when I was starting out in the business, and even when I was you know, further in business, you walk in because you don't have a plan, you check your email, you're looking for a fire in your email, or somebody stops you on the way in and says, hey, you got a problem with the transaction, or someone just stops you to check in with you, and granted, you want to be social. You know, I'm not saying that we certainly don't want to talk to people, but the bottom line is, is we find other things to do other than those top priorities. And I already told you guys, the ideal week is the, the solution there. And so my philosophy and those of you guys have seen me present before, I just love these next couple of slides, is this whole idea of working harder, no, <laughs> working smarter, not harder. Because um, I think it's really important, right? It's, it's uh, life, is, life is too short to just uh, be work, work, work if we're not having a little bit of fun. Um, and so I really believe in this idea of keeping it simple, right? You guys all heard that KISS philosophy, keep it simple, stupid. Um, and so I use this great example, and uh, I don't know where I found this example years ago, but I'll continue to use it probably forever unless I find a better example. But back in the 60s, JFK said, we are going to the moon, right? He said, we're going to get there, we're going to get there this decade. And it was a pretty big deal, pretty bold, uh, pretty bold statement. And so when they were trying to figure out how they were going to get an astronaut to the moon, um, one of the problems they had to, had to figure out was how do we get a space pen that's going to write upside down, right side up, super hot, super cold, gravity, no gravity, and really make it work. And so they set out to build this wonder pen. And at that time, um, they actually spent um, what's considered, depends on who you believe, at least a million bucks for the pen. And there's some rumors that in today's dollars, it's over $10 million, which is a lot of stinking money for a pen, right? Um, but you know what? They built a pretty darn cool pen. And you could buy it on Amazon now for like four bucks. And at the same time, we were in a space race with Russia. And I don't know. Uh, how to read Russian, but that says NASA in Russian, you know, kind of like the whole Sputnik thing. And the issue was they didn't have a million, $10 million to spend on a pen. Um, so when they went up in space, they just um, used a pencil. 
right? And so that's the whole idea of thinking smarter, not harder. And so what I teach is I tend to teach things that are just easy. Like I'm not trying to introduce a new technology to help you guys close more homes, right? I'm helping you guys figure out how do I organize my day? How do I change my mindset? And how do I focus on the, the right things and identify what the right things are to focus on in order to do more business in less time? So we're going to be thinking pencil, not pen today. And I think this will be kind of make sense to all of you, but you know, you have goals, you have activities and you have results, right? And so what happens is, is that when you have a goal, right, that's a result. And as I said a little bit earlier, activities lead to results. And we also are going to talk about ideas and projects. And then this whole thing called an ideal week. And that's why the business plan isn't just one page. It's kind of the, the really key pieces that I find when it comes to business planning that people need to look at. Now, um, you know, it's funny, I'm not in my office. I'm, I'm remote, even though this looks like my fancy office behind me. It's my fake fancy office. Um, and I have an old business plan. I, I got my undergraduate degree in entrepreneurship. And uh, the University of Arizona had an entrepreneurship program and that at the time was the number one rated entrepreneurship program in the country ahead of Harvard and all those other institutions. And there was 30 of us in the program and 10 of us were undergraduate students and 20 people were in the program getting their MBA. And we all spent a, one whole year building a business plan. And my business plan was this thick. Right, super thick, super detailed, and that just was way too much. And so I love the idea of how do we simplify it. And so the, for me, I would I would print this out on a that tool out on an eleven by seventeen piece of paper. Um, since I'm traveling, I don't have a printer that prints that big. Mine is on eight half by eleven papers, and they're all just stapled together. Um, but I really love it when I was in my office and could print it out. I actually printed mine out last year on cardstock, and I really liked that. I could feel it, it would, you know, felt really good, and that's actually um, made it so I could slide it into my planner and carry it with me throughout the year. And so when we start with business plan, we have to start with the past, right? Because unless you're brand new and there could be anyone who's new, if you're new, let me know that you're new, but I'm gonna assume most of you have been in the business for at least a year. And um, you're gonna look back and say, okay, well, how did I do last year, right? Was I satisfied with my 2020? And that'll determine, you know, if you're satisfied with it, then that may be your target again for 2021. If you're dissatisfied with it, then we're gonna set a higher target, right? And then we'll talk about what got in the way in a few minutes and how you identify that. But ultimately, we're going to start with the past. Um, and we're going to start with results. Again, what did we do to get there? And we start with results primarily because that's what most people have. Um, and so again, I mentioned I'll talk to you guys as loan officers as well today. So if you're a loan officer, you're going to look at your closed transactions and you're going to look at it really just in units and dollar volume. And you're going to look at your pre-qualifications issued if you have the ability to do it. So you'll obviously get the transactions out of your loan origination system, your boss should be able to get that for you, branch manager. You're gonna look at your pre-qualifications issued. Hopefully you keep track of that. Maybe you have a system that does. You're gonna look at applications, guess what? Also in your loan origination system. And then you'll look at your leads. Now that's one you may or may not have, right? It could be all on a scratch pad of paper, or hopefully it's in a CRM and you can look to see what you had in there. And real estate agents, it's pretty similar for you. You're gonna look at your closed transactions, unit and volume. Um, because again, we wanna look and see how many families did we help and what was our volume. Um, and then you're going to look at your um, other uh, results that you had. What were my listing appointments? What were my buyer appointments? And then how many leads did I have to get there? Again, we're trying to connect the dots, right? You start over here um, with a lead, then you get a listing appointment or a buyer appointment, and then you get an escrow, and then you have a closed transaction, right? And we ultimately want to know conversion rates. I did a lot of interviews of some top coaches in the fourth quarter of last year, and they all believed that knowing your conversion rates was really critical. Um, of course, when it comes to conversion rates, a good conversion rate is better than last conversion rate that you that you did. So if you're looking at it monthly or quarterly, you know you just want to be 1% better than last time. Certainly, if you're more than 1%, that's pretty good. But we're ultimately started looking at those results because success leaves clues, right? We all know that. If we can look backwards, we can see how did we do. And if you don't have all those numbers, you don't have them. If you didn't keep track of your listing appointments, or your buyer appointments, that's okay. Guess what? You can start keep tracking of them now. Hopefully you've had a few already this year. And so you can actually say, okay, gosh, here's what I have so far. Because in the end, what we're trying to do, as I said, was connect the dots. We want to know how many from this lever do I have to pull in order to get to the end, which is a closed transaction lever. And it would be nice to know that, hey, if I get, you know, 14 uh, listing appointments, then I'm going to have close 10 transactions or whatever that number looks like for you. And so we're going to look at last year's results that we just talked about how you're going to get them. And you're going to fill last year's results into the top of the business planning tool where it shows you the big three. Why do we pick three? 
because more than three is really hard to execute. And so I'm all into business and personal. And you'll hear me, you'll see it coming up in some slides that why we talk about personal. And really, what are your, uh, what were your goals last year? And what were your totals? And so for me, normally, this would be family serve, loan volume funded. I'm not big into tracking income. Um, but a lot of people, third number three will be income. And great, that's a great one, great one to do. It's just not my personal driver. Um, personal, again, uh, goals that are uh, specific, right? You want uh, specific goals when you set them. We'll talk about that in just a minute. But, you know, personal for me normally is number of vacation days, um, amount of money that goes into savings. Again, I don't focus on the income, but I focus on how much did I actually get into, you know, into savings. And so those are just things to think about. But whatever that personal goal is, um, you know, we'll put in there. Um, I just think relationships matter. And so that's why I believe in, in personal goals. It's, I think COVID uh, highlighted that, you know, it's, we got so many people that we used to see all the time and took for granted that we did. And now that we have to make an effort to reach out to them or vice versa, it's not happening. And so I really think this whole idea of, of reaching out to people and how do we figure out how to have quote unquote life balance. I don't think there's ever life balance. I think you have, you know, ins and outs of, of that. I think you work really hard when you work. And then I like to unplug when I unplug. And so whatever that looks like for you, I just want to build that into the planner or build that into the business planning tool so that you can actually uh, be looking at that as you're thinking about planning. Um, the next section right below what did I do last year is what are my thoughts and adjustments and changes? So think of this kind of like a keep, start, stop, um, or a keep, improve, start, stop. You know, what did I do that was working and I want to keep doing? What did I work that, what did I do last year that was working, but I need to improve on? Um, what did I do last year that I have to stop doing? Like that, again, that definition of insanity. What am I doing? Where am I spending time that, that I shouldn't be spending time? It could be a networking group. Um, it could be a type of leads that you're trying to follow up on. Um, it just could be um, someone in your life who sucks a lot of time from your life. Um, and then lastly, what do I want to start doing? Like, what is it that I didn't do last year that I heard other people talking about that I didn't do? And I'll show you where you keep those ideas in just a minute. But ultimately, you know, what I want to start doing, this is kind of the narrative of your year, right? It could just start off with like, gosh, 2020 started off with such great hope. And then this thing called COVID happened, right? Um, but I see some really cool narratives when I see people take the time to fill it out. For me, I'm a bullet point guy. So mine's just bullet points of, of what it was that I thought about uh, last year. Um, and then we look at next year, right? So what are those same three, big three things going to be? And again, this is your yearly goals. What else could you put on there? Hire an assistant, get a new CRM, um, all those things, you know, that are, that are in there. Personal, you know, of course we see a lot of, hey, I'm going to lose, you know, 20 pounds. Um, I'm going to get fit. Um, you know, for me, my focus right now is my morning routine. So I put that morning routine in there because it's just been on the road a lot. And when I'm on the road, morning routine suffers. So what is it personally that you want to do? Uh, my goal is unplugged days versus vacation days, because I just don't see 2021 being a day, a year where I have a lot of vacations. Um, it is what it is, and I'm okay with that. Um, I said that before that you have to make goals um, specific. So let's sort of talk about this whole idea. You've probably heard of a SMART goal. I like to call them SMART goals, right? It has to be specific. So, you know, it's not like I'm going to help lots of families with homes. I'm going to sell 25 homes. It's not like I'm going to lose weight, I'm going to lose 20 pounds, whatever that number is, you want to be specific. Um, and it's got to be measurable, right? Again, I can't lose a lot of weight, but I can lose 20 pounds. Um, it's got to be achievable. And this one's a weird one. You know, obviously, I didn't make the whole smarts thing up. But, you know, if you if you close 20 homes this year, don't say you're gonna close 100 next year, right? I mean, that's a little bit too much of a stretch. You know, what's realistic, you know, closing 30, that, that might be a good push. Um, it's got to be relevant to you. You know, certainly don't pick a a goal personal or business wise that has nothing to do with you and what you do, you know, I'm going to be a billionaire, whatever. I mean, that's not, let's get relative, uh, realistic. I'm um, time sensitive. A favorite thing of a coach always to say is by when. Um, and so that's why this is an annual plan. And then that's why we break into these quarterly plans because some of these goals will only take you a quarter to achieve. And if you can achieve, you know, one, two or three projects in a quarter, that's pretty huge. Um, you know, that's just unusual. Most people don't deliver that. So we got to set a time on it. And then lastly, I added this stretching thing in there. So again, if you close 20 transactions, you know, 25 might be a good goal. 30 might be a stretch. And maybe, maybe 40 is the stretch. But what would it really look like? And so normally I'm a person who sets two goals for myself. I set what I think is a realistic goal that I'll be satisfied if I hit. And then I'll hit that number that I really secretly want to hit that's more of a stretch. And 
um, and push myself. I'm not one of those people who sets a goal. If I did 20 last year, then I'm going to set it for 18 this year so I can bust through it, right? Um, I'm a type of person who typically, if I did something last year, I'm going to set the same or higher goal this year. And especially those of you who are loan officers, right? Refinances uh, will still be present in 2021, but not quite as much as they were in 2020. And I don't love the idea of saying, okay, I closed 100 loans last year. I'm going to close 90 this year. I like the idea of saying I closed 100 last year. Let me close 100 again this year. I think that's an okay goal in, um, you know, after the year that we had. And so once we go annual, we go annual to quarterly. I already mentioned, I mean, you know, win by noon is a quarterly planner. I feel like you have to break it down into bite-sized chunks, right? Um, and so that's, that's, you know, key number one. Um, and then key number two, it'll force you to meet with your accountability partner. And I think accountability is so key. And that's why uh, those of you um, who are here um, as a loan officer with your real estate agent or real estate agent with your loan officer, I just applaud you because you need someone who's going to hold you accountable. If you're a branch manager um, in a real estate office or whoops, that was my remote control. That wasn't good to drop. That's all right. Just pretend that that didn't happen. Um, but, uh, you know, if you are in a, uh, you know, if you're a, a leader of a team or of a branch of a real estate company or mortgage company, you know, consider, um, you know, holding, finding someone to hold you accountable. Um, you're 76% more likely to achieve a goal according um, to the uh, most uh, reliable study that I've seen if you actually have an accountability partner. Um, what they'll tell you is you need to have thought of the goal, um, written, uh, thought of the steps and written down the steps for your goal, shared with a friend and held yourself accountable and you're 76% likely to get there. And the interesting thing is that although I think the accountability is the number one key because the people who had accountability um, achieved their goals 12% more than the people who did all the other steps without the accountability piece. I still feel like if you don't take the time to write the steps to get there, okay, so let me repeat that again. Hold your head, put your hand on your head and say, I'm going to write down the steps to get there. Again, that's why we're doing a business plan. And that's the intentionality I'm talking about. It's the whole idea of forcing yourself um, to uh, meet with each other so that you actually will get this done and force yourself to look at it over and over again. And so then we're going to break it to a, a Q1 goal. So if you said you were going to do uh, 24 transactions, then you have a couple of choices. You can divide it by four, right? There's four quarters in a year. And you can say, I'm going to do six transactions. Or if you think, oh gosh, you know, it's snowing in my area now and I'm only going to sell two houses, you know, this quarter, you can adjust it for seasonality if you know how to do it. You can be like, all right, I'm going to sell two in the first quarter, two in the last quarter, and then I'm going to sell, um, you know, 10 in, in each of the other two quarters, right? Whatever you think. But for me, I'm all about law of averages. I would just shoot for dividing by four and getting it done. Um, and again, production is the dollar volume, right? So uh, some of you live in areas where, you know, you sell a house and it's a million bucks and you're like, I, I sold $10 million for the houses, which was your 10 houses last year. And other people are like, hey, you know, I sold a million dollars worth of houses because my houses are only $100,000 and that was 10 houses. So I tend to find that people who are live in high dollar places like to talk about production dollar volume and people who live in areas with lower uh, amounts for whether it's a home purchase or a loan amount, like talking units. Um, and that's okay. And then again, what are those other goals you want to break down? And this is where I think the quarterly comes into play. It's really hard to pick personal goals in my mind that go past a quarter. Certainly for me, I can pick the number of days of vacation I want in a year. Certainly for me, I can pick the amount of money I want in savings in a year. And, um, and so just know that you can throw that um, in here, but by breaking it down into a quarter, will more likely get you there. And so here's where it starts to get harder. And so don't I don't want to lose you. This is where people start getting, you know, if I teach this live, and I see your eyeballs. I see your, I see the, the stress start to start to come in. Um, and again, most of you just need to start with your closed transactions, right? I mean, that's it. Just start with the closed transactions. Um, remember to keep it simple um, because the ultimate goal is to figure out which activities and how many lead to the results you want, right? So let me say that again, right? Ultimate goal is to figure out which activities and how much lead to those results. And think about it this way. Um, when you just talk about the results side, wouldn't it be nice to know how many leads last year did I need in order to close one transaction? Um, and so again, it depends where your leads come from. If your leads are online, you know, coming off of an internet site, you might need 50 or 100 leads to close a transaction. If all your leads are coming from your sphere, you know, you might only need, you know, two or three to close a transaction. And so that's where knowing your numbers matters so that you can focus um, to keep score in January to know whether you're on track to close at your number in December versus realizing in September, October that you're off track and not gonna hit it, right? Uh, you have to dig in now 
Um, dig in now or any time that you fall behind to figure it out. If you know that you need a certain number of leads to, to hit your closing goal this year, well, then I want you to figure out in any given week or month or quarter that you're short leads, figure out, well, how much harder do I have to work? Where am I going to find those leads? Who am I going to call to get those leads? Um, and there's some great resources out there where I know people um, you know, can do that. And we can certainly talk about it later at the end of, during Q&A if you guys want. So I've already said success leaves clues and you'll see me say it a lot um, because it does, we all know it. Um, and so my question for you is, do you know what activities you need to do every day to meet your goals? And I had a realtor who got up in front of a training class that I was at and um, he got up there and said that. And he said, challenged everyone in the room and not one person could raise their hand. There was about 60 real estate agents in the room. And he, I uh, talked to him uh, last week, close to $40 million of transactions last year um, with his team. And most of that was his team. He was actually uh, not focused, believe it or not, on all that stuff. But, um, but he knows exactly how many calls he needs to make in his database to get a lead, to get a closed transaction. He knows how many doors he needs to knock on pre-COVID, um, knock on in order to get a lead, in order to get a closed transaction. And most people just don't know that. And if you don't know those numbers, then how are you going to actually get there? And so connecting the dots, as I've already said, is really the key to get there. So we want to set goals based on what you have data for. So what you don't have data for, then let's not worry about. We can, we can do a best guess at a goal. And then as you start recording these activities and recording these results in 2021, guess what? It gives you better data to plan next quarter. In fact, it gives you better data to plan next week. And so you've probably heard the thing before that says the best day to plant an oak tree was 20 years ago and the second best day is today. And so for those of you who haven't been doing planning, who haven't been recording activities and results, great. Guess what? You know, there's still a few more hours in the day wherever you're located where you can actually do that. And so it's a new day. You have a new lease on life. You can plant a new oak tree. And so I want you guys to start recording activities so you can figure out not only what the number of leads you need is let's figure out what activities lead to the leads. Right? Let's figure out how many calls, how many people I have to talk to or meet to, um, how many doors do I have to knock on um, in order to get there, right? And there's two types of calls for you guys, and we'll talk about that in just a sec. Because um, once you get there, you can determine the rest. And so let's talk um, weekly results real quick for loan officers. It's leads, applications, pre-qualifications issued, new loans in process, um, closed, new partners. And then there's blanks for you to record any other result that you want. So again, this could be your paycheck if you're you know, keeping uh, track of your money. Um, for real estate agents, it's um, buyer and seller leads, qualified buyers, right? Someone paying cash or that's got a prequal letter for. Uh, listings, um, those that are in escrow. Database ads is just such a great one for you guys because you guys are so good at calling your database. So let's keep track of that. Like, let's set a goal for that. Why not for the year of how many people you want to add to your database um, each week or each month? And then um, separate out your buyers and sellers closed and you can have a total. And again, you've got a, another spot there to record some other stuff. And then, um, and then you break it down from there into weekly activity commitments. And so look at that word there. I talked about being intentional before. What am I going to commit to? Um, and again, if you've never done this before, skip this part. If you're brand new and you're not a win by new user, skip this 100%. But just know these are things that I would personally encourage you to record going forward, right? How many leads am I calling? Um, how many clients am I calling? How many you know, partners? This is the loan officer version of it. Um, and then when you're for the realtors, here's what yours looks like, right? Buyer and seller lead calls, right? Client calls. So client call is someone for real estate agents. It's someone who's in process. So someone that you already um, have a, a buyer broker with who you're showing homes to or someone who you have a listing for. That's just the in transaction. Um, database calls. Again, you guys are great at that, making your you know quarterly calls or however often you're calling your database and uh, continue to do that. Um, quality conversations. Who am I talking to, right? Buyer and listing, uh, you know, presentations. Um, prospecting time is there. Now, prospecting time, the reason it's in real estate agent and not in loan officers is because a lot of you use a dialer. You know, I called a real estate buddy of mine the other day. He's like, hang on, Todd, I couldn't hear it. I had my dialer on. Um, he, so he took off his Mojo headset and, and then he talked to me. But um, so oftentimes, especially if you're, if you're calling just data, you're going to do hours of prospecting versus or minutes of prospecting versus number of dials, right? So dials is, you know, the hand dial or you're sending someone a text. It's not mass. Then you've got the prospect. And then real estate reviews. You'll notice on the loan officer side, we had annual reviews and TCAs, which is mortgage coaches, total cost analysis. No, I don't own mortgage coach or any part of it. Um, I just love Dave and I love the product. I use the product from my first day in the mortgage business. And so it made it into all the mortgage, um, all the mortgage planners. And if you're a real estate agent on here, 
you know, most likely you've got a loan officer that uses uh, that, that tool as well. Um, and so annual reviews and real estate reviews. And again, I'll talk about that in a minute when I talk about ideal week. And like I said, activities matter. That's why we start looking at the activities. I was uh, talking to a loan officer the other day and for every 26 calls they made last year, when they dialed the phone proactively um, to a lead a client or a realtor, um, they closed one transaction. So wouldn't you like to know that? So literally they know most likely as long as their numbers hold true again in 2021, that if they make 26 calls, their goal is to um, make 20 or well, really 30. They rounded up. I talked about it, right? Hey, the market may not be as easy next year, may take more calls. So they went for 30 calls a day, five days a week um, with, a, you know, with a, a goal of 50 weeks a year of working. And um, and so when you, you know, you, you add up all those weeks, um, it's, you know, it's a target basically for a 300 loan a year loan officer. And they know it because they've watched their numbers. Um, some of you could only be 20 calls you have to make, could be 40 calls you have to make. But wouldn't it be nice to know when you left the, for the day, when you looked at your numbers for the week, huh, am I on track with my activities? Because eventually the activities lead to results. The next thing that we do is the personal stuff. I call them habits of success. And I'll just run through them real quick and I'll talk about the why behind it. On time is time working on your business. For me personally, right now, I'm scheduling a minimum of four hours a week. I've actually got to set up right now for six hours a week, just working on planning and planning on my business. Um, it's really important. It could be learning time for you. Like, hey, I'll read a book. I'll listen to a podcast. Handwritten notes, right? A great one. Um, if, if you are part of the Mortgage Coach community, or even if you're not, you can go to the Mortgage Coach YouTube channel, Realtor, Loan Officer, doesn't really matter. And uh, there was a webinar we did last Friday on, uh, by, we interviewed Mr. Thank You on the power of thank you notes. It was pretty cool. Um, social media posts and hours per week. Now, there's two reasons we put this in here. Um, number one is because we all need to be posting strategically for business right now. And so I think you should be looking at how many posts is that a week for me? Is that four posts, three posts, seven posts? Um, and then I like the hours per week, not from am I, me working on my business. It's how many hours I get sucked into Facebook when I got on there. It really is a reminder to stay off of it, right? That whole idea of being proactive, not reactive. Um, I'm super nerdy about my health. Um, sleep is my biggest uh, focus uh, most of the time. Exercise morning and evening routine. So when you look at mine, if I, if I flip my morning and, and evening routine open um, in my planner, right? My morning routine is coffee. Oh, I drink decaf. So it's really weird to say I drink coffee, but I still enjoy the, the feeling of drinking coffee. You know, it's decaf. Um, meditation, I'm reading something spiritual and learning. Um, I'm staying off my phone and off my computer to at least 7 a.m. So that's my morning routine, right? My evening routine, no screens an hour before bed, um, no food three hours before bed at two hour minimum, right? So it's kind of sometimes we have a stretch goal and a real goal, right? My, my, my goal is three hours. My minimum is two hours. Because why? Because it leads to better sleep. And um, so these are just things that if I'm going to be my best, right? If I'm going to truly be the most productive I can be and have the most energy, I know if I do these things, it'll be better for me. And then a new habit. So for me right now, my new habit is I'm fasting. So I got a nerdy fasting app on my phone and uh, told me today when I got done with my 16 hour fast, I fasted for 16 hours and 40 some odd minutes. So I put 16 in my planner next to new habit. And that's, uh, that's my habit that I'm, that I'm focusing on this quarter. And so remember I said, life is more than, is more than businesses. And this critical relationships is funny because uh, I always tell the story, Adam was my right hand and win by noon. He threw this in here. He made it up because we had space. He's like, well, it doesn't look good. We don't, we need, we got the space. What do we do with it? And I was like, that's dumb. Uh, I'll, I didn't quite say that's dumb. I'm like, oh, whatever. That's, you know, probably what I said. And uh, so let's just see how it goes, right? Because users always tell us what's good. And I um, mean, it was really great. Uh, we had such good feedback on it from people who use it. And I think with COVID, as I said, relationships suffered. People forgot about people who were out of sight, out of mind. And so for me, again, it's got, um, and I'm specific about things, right? Specificity matters. So, you know, I've got my wife and my girls on there. I got my parents, I got my brothers, I got my team and I named out my team members by name. So it didn't just say team, right? I named them out by name. Um, and then I have a few other friends that I want to make sure I did on there. And I actually put a blank with some things around there of who are the other relationships I'm going to go after. And I haven't decided yet. Um, I'm looking for them. You know, I just feel like uh, that was my biggest loss of 2020 was, was new relationships. Now, one of the challenges in the, is that you all have SOS, right? At least I do. Um, SOS is shiny object syndrome and we just get distracted, right? Oh, look, there's a bird, like, like super easy to get distracted if you're um, in sales. And so we have to actually have this idea list to put things in. And so again, as I've got ideas broken out differently on my list. Um, so mine actually has, uh, 
uh, four, you know, four different sections on my, on my list. Um, one is win by noon. One is for my team. Um, I've got one for my family. Um, I've got one that's personal. And then I've got one actually I added a book list the other day because um, someone recommended a book and I want to make sure I, I get it and listen to it. And so, um, so I've got that in here. And the reason that you do that is so that you don't get distracted down running, you know, down a path and not get whatever it is thought through first. And then if you decide it's worth pursuing that you actually, you know, do it. I've got a great implementation tool. Um, it should be in the mortgage coach pro to, uh, sorry, in the win by noon uh, user mastermind group. It's a, it's posted up in there. And so you can go in there and look at that implementation tool where you can take these ideas and then grade them and decide which ones to do first. But ultimately um, this whole project list is where I just, every time I think of something during the quarter, I dump it here. And then when I move to the next quarter, I look and see which ones that I execute on, what was important. Then I move them on to the next one. The, the real key here is to decide which ones are going to turn into projects, right? Um, and so again, before we get distracted on it, we want to write down the projects. And I pick one to three projects at a time to work on because I tend to find anytime I've got more than that, nothing gets done. And there's the, by when, right? A planned completion date. And again, I've got another tool. You can just email me. I'm happy to send it to you, Todd at winbynoon.com, which is a, a larger project planning tool. It just has more space for this stuff. But you know, again, if you're going to get a new CRM, put it as your project and remind yourself and have it in there because then you can look back at your business plan or if it's in your planner, you can look in your planner and you can look back each week and say, what am I, how am I doing? Am I getting my project done? And remind yourself. And the reason I create the idea list is because I tend to find that I used to run down at projects because it was the one that seemed the brightest and shiniest hadn't thought through it. And then it, it ended up getting pushed aside when I was halfway done, wasted time on half of it, and then moved on to something else. And what I found since I've been keeping this, um, this project list is that it actually allows me to think about, do I want to do this? Yes or no, before I jump in and just do it. And then it has the steps. And again, sounds really dumb. Most of your projects are more than five steps, but when you interview people and say, well, why didn't you start the project? They just said, I didn't know where to start. I was overwhelmed. And so this is just a spot to write down a few steps. Right? None of you wanted to be a loan officer or realtor when you, when you grow up. And so at that same webinar where the person got up and said um, that he you know, asked the group, do you know what you need to do to, um, you know, every day to reach your goals? Um, someone else got up and said to this group of realtors, and they were all like, you know, chins all hit the floor. He said, you all got in the real estate business to set your own hours. And that is the exact reason you fail. And that is the exact reason you fail. And he said it over and over again. And that is the exact reason you fail. Um, but if you think about it, I already said it, right? People walk into their office with no plan. People walk into their office um, looking for fires. And that's why people fail, right? Um, it's like the whole dog wagging the tail, tail wagging the dog, right? That whole thing, chasing yourself in circles. And so this would be one of those things where um, we could talk about having a, a committed schedule of activities. And so if I was in a room of people, I would probably call on someone who worked in a fast food restaurant um, or Starbucks and someone raised their hand, right? And then we would walk through what does that look like? And you have a committed schedule of activities when you're there. If you're the opening shift, you get in there a certain amount of time before your shift starts and you, you know, you're loading the cash register up and you're pulling the fries out of the freezer and you're getting the burgers ready and all that kind of stuff. You have a committed schedule of activities and that's what your job is. And then if you're working the front counter, you're reacting because you the counter's set up for you. It's got the money in there. You got your hat on. You look all cute and all the things you got to be doing in order to, to be the best uh, frontline person at that fast food or coffee place, whatever it was. But you have this activity and you've got a role of what you do. And it doesn't change. You've got a job. And in real estate, you don't have that. You get to wake up and decide, huh? Hmm. Oh, what am I going to what am I going to do today? Right. Um, and if you have a committed schedule of activities, what I call the ideal week, um, then that's how you're actually going to overcome the challenges, right? The reason that a McDonald's burger franchise is more successful than, you know, Joe's burgers on the corner is because they have um, systems, they've got schedules, and I'm going to encourage you guys to do that as well. And so that's where this form that comes in here, which is the ideal week, right? This whole idea of what gets scheduled gets done. And so for me, um, if I show you guys mine for this week, um, it may not be easy to see, but I'll... Uh, I'll show you what mine looks like. Now, mine's a little bit weird right now because I am working remotely. And, um, and so I got to kind of show it to you from here. So you can see here, I've got my on time in the morning. I've got unplug on the weekends because I don't have anything planned there. And then you'll look, I got my dialing time. I only had a few things that are scheduled in the, in the week that'll get in the way of it. And then I have my webinars here, right here we are here because I'm East Coast time right now. And then react, this is my time to do all the reacting and then unplug. And mine is a little 
shifted because of the fact that I'm normally in Arizona in mountain time. And right now I'm in Eastern time. And so it's shifted, but this is the visual thing. And so I want to see what this looks like for the quarter. Like, what is this going to look like for me and set that as my committed target? I'm going to be intentional about that. And I want you guys to think about that as well. Granted, every week is not going to be like that, but you can make most weeks like that. And that's what I found is when people took the time up front to do this and then look at it every week. And this is, this is what I want my week to look like. So I've got a group of real estate agents on a hundred plus million dollar team in uh, the Arizona, the Phoenix market. And you know, they're nine to 11 for them is lead gen time, right? So there, there's our blocked out They're in the office. Typically now some of them are at home, you know, between lead gen from nine to 11. I've worked with real estate teams who block nine to noon to lead gen every day. And um, again, it's just a matter of you deciding what, what do I want that to look like most weeks? And then just know there's going to be weeks where things, you know, get things get moved around. I view these like Lego blocks. They're not things that are optional. Um, you can't just delete it but it's a Lego block. You can just move it to a different day. So if I had to do, you know, uh, two hours of, of prospecting time uh, or two hours of on time, and it, I can't eliminate it just if I forgot to do it this morning, right? If I, if I would have forgotten, um, I'm just going to move it to a different day and still make sure it gets done, right? Make it so they're not optional, make it sure that they get, they just get moved and, and that you're committed to doing it. I believe if you own your week, you can own your business in life. And so I break activities into two types of activities. I, I say that there's win by noon required daily disciplines. These are things you need to do in your business every day, like not just some days, but every day. Well, like five days a week, right? Every day. And then you have target day activities. Now, when we talk about target day activities, it's kind of like, um, you know, these are all the things that are going to get you from where you are to your goals and where you want to go. I mentioned earlier that that study showed that the people who knew what the activities were to get to their goals are the ones who achieved it the most. Um, and so that's why we talked about the accountability partner. Um, and I would say you do a weekly check-in, um, you know, or in a monthly in person once we can do that again. Um, and so that was just a quick aside for those of you here with your, with your peoples. But let's just talk about the, the win binding daily disciplines, right? So for everyone, I don't care what industry you're in. I have a lot of insurance agent users now of win by noon. Um, it's leads. We're doing, we're calling leads, right? I got executives who use it and they recruit, right? That's a lead to them, right? Whatever your leads are, you should be calling leads every single day. There's no days where you shouldn't be calling leads because we know if you don't call them, they're not going to call follow up with you. Um, and you realtors need to be working your sphere, right? You guys do database calls. And so this is the one where you could say, well, I don't do it every day. I just do it three days a week. Great. Write it down what the three days a week you are you do it, but you need to call leads every day, period, right? There's just no day you shouldn't be following with your leads. If someone said they want to buy a house or sell a house, you should be following up with them. And if they said, hey, call me in a week, then great. Make sure you have a day scheduled and you've written down on your calendar for that day to call that person about um, you know, follow about uh, listing their home. Um, so um, we got leads, we've got sphere. Um, and then if you're a loan officer, your second one is leads and loan applicants who you haven't gotten across to a pre-approval yet. You know, you've got those people, you know that you have people who have not gotten you that stinking tax return. And you're like, yeah, I got the application. And your realtor's like, huh, well, yeah, but where's my prequal letter, right? And we know they're infinitely more likely to buy with you and your realtor partner if you get the prequal out. And you've got to follow up on it because people, you know, they seem all excited about it, but if they don't get you what you need, then you aren't going to get them to buy a home. So target day activities, um, it's what you do with specific days of the week. And it's kind of like spirit days. You know, I didn't have these, but my kids did, right? Crazy hair day and, and, and pajama day at school. It's things we're going to do specific days of the week in order to be more efficient and more consistent. Now, hear me out on this. The reason that we're going to be more efficient is because if I do one activity at a time, I'm going to get through it and get more of it done before I get distracted by something else. So if I say, hey, I'm going to call leads for 30 minutes and I'm in my leads, then I'm going to call those leads and get it done. If I say I'm going to call my database and I'm going to call 10 people in my database today, whether that takes me five minutes or it takes me 55 minutes or an hour and 35 minutes, I'm more efficient because I'm in there doing that, focused on it um, and getting it done. And then actually you become more consistent when you assign a day to it. Um, and I would say that this is really critical when we talk about the ones where we're updating clients, because if you tell a client, hey, I'm going to update you every week, um, and then you don't, then you broke trust with that client. And so if you tell them, hey, I'm going to update you every Tuesday or every Wednesday or whatever day of the week you're going to choose to do it, then um, you now have made a commitment. And guess what? When you tell someone you're going to do it a specific day of the week, you're going to be more consistent. Hello. Um, and this is when conversion rates increase. This is when the magic happens. You actually close more transactions in less time, working smarter, not harder, because you're doing things on a consistent basis. And so let me just walk you through how I would set up my ideal week. If I was a real estate agent and for you loan officers, this is how I set mine up when I was doing loans. And I think a lot of you know that, you know, my last year of doing loans, I did 550 loans, about $115 million. 
Um, and so it, it worked. So again, here's start off calling leads. We told you that. Calling your sphere if you're a realtor and then calling your applicants who haven't converted if you're a loan officer. And then really just review, right? Look at your numbers. Total up your numbers from last week. How did I do? I set a goal to have three leads. How many did I get? Oh my gosh, I didn't get three. Okay. Um, and here's the key, right? We're not going to delete. If I said I was going to get three leads last week and I didn't, um, I only got two. Guess what my goal is for this week? Four, right? We're not going to, we're not writing that lead off because if I write that lead off today, guess what? That's less close transactions at the end of the year. I got to make it up this week, right? And that's why we want the, the goals to be realistic goals, right? What is that real number I need to have? And hopefully you'll know what that number is. So we're going to review and look at where we were and we're going to set our intentions for the week, right? For me, this is what I'm going to write my calendar out. I'm going to, I'm going to look at my ideal week compared to what I want it to be. You saw my ideal week for, for that I showed you for uh, this week. It's got, you know, three webinars in there. Well, guess what? Those webinars weren't on my ideal week. Well, one of them was, but the other ones are just ones I put in there. Well, great. I, I said those were good and I set the intentions and I'm here today doing them. Um, that's that planning committee that I'm talking about. And then I'm going to launch my week and launch my week is to be clear my emails, right? If you're a realtor, it's going to be enter your leads from your open house over the weekend into the CRM. It's going to be following up on the offers that got submitted. It's going to be launching a new transaction that you have an offer accepted on or a new listing that has an offer accepted on. It's just getting that, getting yourself going. It's the, should be the easiest day, right? Where you're just getting yourself going for the week. And so on Tuesday, we're doing the leads database loan applicants who haven't crossed over. And then again, you real estate agents, this is your in escrow update calls. Again, I already kind of mentioned it, spoiler alert, right? We're going to actually call people who are, in, who are in escrow. So these are your listings that have a contract. These are your buyers who have a contract. And again, the good news is you'll see this doesn't take a ton of time, right? I suggest you do it first thing, right? Win by noon. Because again, if you wait till the end of the day, you might get distracted and something might, some emergency may about, might pop up and you might not get it done. This is your plan for the day. I'm going to get up, I'm going to call my leads. I'm going to call people in my database. I'll do these in escrow calls, right? It's going to only be, you know, a handful of calls. It's just not that many calls, um, you know, and if it's a lot of calls, that's good. That means you have a lot of transactions going. Loan officer, it's your loan status update calls, right? They go hand in hand. These are your folks that are um, under contract and, and, and going. And so really all you're going to be doing is calling the client. You're going to be calling the buyer's agent. If you're the listing agent, you're going to be calling the listing agent. If you're the buyer's agent, loan officers, you're going to call both. You're going to check in with your transaction coordinator. If you're a real estate agent, if you are a loan officer, you should call the transaction coordinator because he or she controls your destiny. They know whose transactions are blowing up and that's a great potential referral source for you. And all you're telling them is what's next, right? Hey, you know what? It's Todd. It's your Tuesday update call. Um, you know, your uh, appraisal was ordered. It's going to be in tomorrow and uh, you're in underwriting for your conditional approval. We expect that out by Thursday, right? What's next, right? If you're, hey, um, you know, we, uh, you know, if you're listing, it's your listing, right? Hey, the appraisal was done uh, yesterday and, you know, the lender says it'll be in by Friday. I'll keep you posted, right? Because that's what people want. They want communication. And if you don't have scheduled communication, um, it becomes uh, unplanned and therefore unpredictable for the person on their side and more stressful. When you tell them, hey, I'm going to call you Tuesday with an update, doesn't mean they won't call you Monday or Thursday, um, but it's less likely because typically they, if they call you, they're going to apologize. Hey, Todd, I'm really sorry. I know you're going to call me tomorrow with an update, but I just really need to know about that appraisal, right? That's going to happen. That's okay. Wednesday leads, sphere, loan applicants that haven't converted. And then what we're going to do, we're going to call this pipeline protection day. And we do this because your clients have an internet addiction. Sadly, you probably have an internet addiction too. But that's what we're going to do. And so real estate agents, you're going to call your buyers and sellers not in escrow, right? Your sellers are wondering what the heck is going on. This where you can tell them the feedback from the weekend, um, from the people who came through. You can, you know, just go for your buyers because they're frustrated right now with low inventory. And you're going to be helping your buyer understands what's going on and maybe set up there. Hey, look at that. There are hopefully some new properties on the market or, hey, did you see the seven listings I sent you today? You want to see any of them? But this is really just keeping those folks who aren't in escrow engaged with you. Because I can tell you from the loan officer's perspective, when you're not doing this, they're calling us and saying, I haven't heard from my realtor. Like what's going on? You think that the auto listings you're sending them every week are keeping them up to date. They're not. They're actually looking at other websites and they're maybe going to get distracted by somebody else because they're Look, there's a bird right there. They're distracted like that squirrel picture. Loan officers, you're going to call your pre-qualified clients because again, they're looking online, they're seeing properties and they can get sucked into someone else's system with some other realtor who's got a loan officer that's not you. And then all you're really doing is get them one of these things, right? Rate and market updates are super boring, but you know what? Markets have moved. So it's a good, good thing to get program updates, right? When the loan limits changed or, you know, if there's a new rule in FHA or VA and you've got a client that's, that's buying with that, you want to give you know, give them that and your loan officer should be scripting you with these things to say, right? Make sure that you're checking with your loan officers when that happens. But here's my favorite one, holiday calls, right? 
You know, I talked to a, a realtor friend of mine today and I said, well, how was your holiday? Right. I can still do that. Um, it's not that far off. Right. I can ask her about how was it, you know, she told me what she did for New Year's, which was unfortunately not a whole lot. Um, but nonetheless, you know, those are the conversations that you can have because because of COVID, you kind of can predict some of it. But holiday calls are really easy. Right. So when, when things are coming up, you know, before Christmas, you can say, hey, what are you doing for Christmas? Make notes in your CRM. And that way you can call back and say, oh, gosh, how was your trip to Chicago for Christmas? But holiday calls are one of my favorites. Um, my number one script is, hey, I'm just checking in. Again, you just want to get a, a temperature of your clients. Are they getting nervous? Um, you know, because they haven't sold their house yet. Are they getting nervous because they haven't found a house yet? Are they, um, you know, what, what do they need to know? But this is just a great opportunity for you guys to uh, stay a little closer and have a little better experience. You know, you realtors, you got to remind them who their lender is because their lender's not doing this. And then, of course, I joke with lenders that you also need to remind them who their agent is sometimes as well. And again, it's, it's I, people laugh at this in the room. You may or may not have laughed. I tend to find that people who aren't laughing are the ones who don't always have the best follow-up. And therefore, uh, you may lose people and we just don't want that to be the case. And you're also going to tell them what's next. You're going to call people buying within 30 days weekly, people buying within 60 days every other week. And then everyone who's buying at least 60 days out, you're going to call them at least every three to four weeks. You know, living in Arizona, there were so many events that would happen that people would come in the winter, right? Snowbirds, uh, they'd rent a house and they'd say, I'm going to buy a house next year. They'd come for you know, the Phoenix Open golf tournament, and they'd say, I'm going to buy a house next year. And I would always find that the realtors didn't typically keep in touch with them. And I did. I called them every three to four weeks. Sometimes it went to six weeks, but I checked in with them. And so that way, when they came back that next year, I had their application updated. I had them ready to go. And then I got them referred back to my real estate agent. Um, unless sometimes they found another agent in the meantime, which was never good. And you're going to follow up with them until they buy or die. And Thursdays, leads, you're going to call your database. You're going to call your loan applicants who haven't gotten done if you're a loan officer. And then what you're going to do on Thursday, if you're a real estate agent is uh, you're going to remember that your clients still have an internet addiction. You know where they go for value, right? And so again, you're the real estate expert, not this website, um, but your clients go there and they think it is. And so you want to be um, going there because if they go there now, you know, they can get a cash offer, right? Um, you guys all know that that's not a surprise to anybody. The statistic that I saw was when they were in seven markets, they were getting a request for a cash offer every five minutes. They're in uh, 20 some odd markets now. And I promise you they're getting, um, you know, multiple offer requests per minute. Um, so I want you guys to do real estate reviews. Um, I already said it, it was one of the things that we would track um, and you should commit to. And I just think you should commit that every one of your clients gets at least one real estate review a year. And I think quarterly is better. And then some of you have heard of the product HomeBot. I'm a huge fan of HomeBot. Um, there's some discount codes if you go to HomeBot. Um, dot AI for artificial intelligence forward slash win by noon. There's a discount code for realtors and loan officers there. And um, it's a great way to automate it. And then when you call, you're just actually saying, hey, did you look at your your, uh, your HomeBot Digest. In this case, if you're not using that, you just say, hey, I ran a quick CMA on your property. Looks like you're up $30,000. Um, this is even harder if values level off and they're not going up, but it's even more critical then because that's when your client's worried and needs to hear from you. If you're a loan officer, you're doing your partner calls. Um, and you're doing this to protect your weekend because um, close your ears for a second, real estate agents. Real estate agents don't always plan. And so oftentimes they forgot to tell you that the Smith family is flying in from California this weekend and they're going to be looking at houses. And so they're going to call you at seven o'clock on Friday night to get pre-qualified when they land versus if you do this on Thursday, that gives you the rest of the day on Thursday and all day on Friday to track the family down and get their application so that you're not doing it over the weekend. Protect your weekend. Again, same thing. If they're running an open house, maybe they call you Saturday morning and say, hey, any chance you can bring some flyers for this? So if you're calling your agents up ahead and you're asking them, um, what other weekend plans? You can figure that out. You're going to give them client updates, right? Because you just called all your pre-approved clients yesterday. You're going to ask about those weekend plans to protect your weekend. Um, and then the same thing with realtors, you're going to discuss your holiday calls, your rate market updates, your program updates, just checking in. And this is going to fuel them for their conversations with their clients next week. You're going to call your best partners weekly, everyone else every other week and, and uh, the, whole, the rest of the crew. Best partners weekly, second level group, bi-weekly and everyone else every three to four weeks. Because if you don't follow up with them, they won't follow up with you. Friday, we made it. Leads, sphere, loan applications. What are we going to do? We're just going to do a weekly wrap up, right? You real estate agents, you've got to get ready um, for your open houses. You've got to get ready for your realtor tours. So you're just going to tie up loose ends on a Friday, right? That's just really, really important. Um, if you're a loan officer, you're also going to do annual mortgage reviews. Um, of course, you know that I believe in using mortgage coach for those. Again, the same reason is that your clients who the loan officers who did mortgage reviews consistently had a higher amount of their previous clients who came to them first for interest rate quotes last year with, with rates being there where they are. And I promise you, 
Um, I talked to a loan officer today who just found a, a client of theirs that had a five and three quarter primary mortgage rate that they're refinancing the client out of saving $500 a month. Um, ironically, they found that through HomeBot, which is a whole other story. But, um, but ultimately, that there's just people that you know that you should be following up with the Mortgage Coach is a great tool. What about weekends? You know what? I don't schedule things on the weekends because you realtors have the hardest job. You're already working seven days a week. I do know a lot of real estate or loan officers who spent half a day Saturdays um, this past year working on pre-qualifications or working on refinance uh, just because you guys were so busy. But, um, but that's really the key. And just know that you can move any of those days around. Like I like those days for a reason, especially the loan officer ones. Like I think the Thursday realtor calls are critical to protect your weekend. Um, I feel like Tuesday is a great day to do your updates because Monday's typically too hectic. Some Mondays are holidays anyway. And Tuesday, you know, you have time to get everything caught up on Monday and get it going. But, you know, you can move them around. You can, you can stack them up. You could do, you know, if you're a realtor, you could do all your client calls who are in escrow and your client calls who aren't in escrow yet on the same day, right? You just have to decide, but just pick a day and commit to it, right? Committing to it will make you more consistent. All right, so... Future webinars, there's none scheduled right now, um, but there will be. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll look down uh, this weekend and probably schedule some webinars to, to come out soon. I'm definitely gonna do one that's how to do your first monthly review and win by noon. Um, I'll probably do a webinar uh, towards the end of the quarter on how to transition from this plan to the next uh, quarterly business plan. And so um, this is a great time. If you haven't, give me a question. Um, I got some comments, but not really questions during this to ask away. Um, and uh, let's see here. That's awesome. See, so here's someone who said that, uh, oh, of course it's you, Heather. Heather says that her clients and realtors answer the phone. Hey, it's Thursday updates because they know that she'll be updating them every Thursday and expect it. I mean, that's just really huge. Um, and so I'm hoping that this was super helpful for you. Um, I'll hang out for another couple of minutes. I didn't even look at the time. How'd I do? Oh, look at that, three minutes to spare. Um, it's, it's funny how I, I typically literally end this up, just depends how many stories I tell. It, it tends to take 55 to 60 minutes. Um, and so uh, just know any questions that I can answer for you, you know, that's what I'm here for. And, uh, and I appreciate you guys taking the time. I wish you nothing but huge success for 2021. And uh, keep the business plan in front of you. Keep it where you see it. Remind yourself, what is it you're committing to? What Remind yourself to what you have to do. Start recording your activities, because if you can figure out how many of those activities you need in order to get a closed transaction, then you really win. I'm Todd Bookspan. I'll talk to you soon.